So next, let's handle these barrels. You can see that they have an offset dimension of 10 millimeters from this face here. So what we need to do is create some planes, and I'll just select this face here, and under reference geometry, create a plane, and it needs to be offset 10 millimeters. Make sure it's offset in the correct direction. It is, space is right there, and accept it. Now, we open up a sketch on that newly created plane, make sure that we're normal to it. So I'm just gonna hover over this line to activate the midpoint, and then drag out two circles. Hit escape, grab the S key to bring up my smart dimension tool, and now I need to link the outer dimension to X. So equals the dimension X, which is 71, click OK. Next, the inner diameter needs to equal the E dimension. So I'll hit equals E, and that sketch is fully defined. So now I'm gonna go ahead and extrude this barrel need to make sure it's going the right direction, so we'll reverse the direction. And this dimension needs to be equal to the letter D dimension, which is 130. So we will accept it, click OK. Our barrel is connected, but you can see that we have some business going on in here. Well, we can actually just use this sketch and create an extruded cut and select the contour that we want to be cut down here. So under selected contours, we want right here to be selected or we can just select the interface and select OK and that cut will utilize the sketch 4 just as our boss extrude did earlier. So now I need to recreate the same geometry over here so I'm just going to create a new plane off of that face and we're going to offset it 10 mil just like before correct in the right direction so I'll select OK. So now I can sketch on that plane go normal to it and I'll grab the circle tool again, activate that midpoint, and drag two circles out again. Hit escape, S key, smart dimension, and the outer dimension of this barrel actually needs to be set to the Y dimension instead of the X, so we will select that, and the inner dimension is E again. So we will just hit E, 41, click OK. Now we can get out of the dimension tool, and extrude this guy back. You need to switch the direction again and link it to the value of D. And we can also put selected contours in here. If we want to select this as our selected contour to create this barrel, then that would be perfectly fine. So we can click OK and now we can recreate the cut by using Sketch 5. And under selected contours, we want to select this inside face here and that's OK, select OK, and that cut is ready to roll utilizing Sketch 5 just like the boss extrude above it. So next let's handle the boss that appears on this corner here. This is a pretty easy one. All we do is select that face, open up a sketch, grab the top view, and instead of a center rectangle I'm going to grab the corner rectangle, hit escape, S, smart dimension, this needs to be 60, and I want to add a relation, so I don't want that dimension in there. We want these lines to be equal. We'll extrude it up another 10 mil for a total of 35. Merge results, click OK. And now we have this cutout to deal with that goes into the part from the top face. However, you can see that there's a fillet on the edge of this boss. So, to make things easier on us, I'm just going to add one single fillet here and leave the rest of them for later. But I do want to make sure that this one right here is a 10 millimeter fillet, and that way I can use the Offset Entities tool to create the profile of that cut. So, let's go ahead and go normal to that top face again and begin the sketch that will be that deep cut. So like I said, Offset Entities and that is already selected so you can see that we have an offset to the outside we want to reverse that direction and you can see that's a dimension of nine so by creating that fillet before we did the cut the offset entities tool hugs that bend exactly nine millimeters all the way around you don't need to worry about what that angle is so accept it and now we can extrude and cut down to a depth of 20 millimeters. The reason for 20 millimeters is that there's a 5 millimeter thickness left on the bottom. And instead of 
just punching in 20 mil, what you could do is do equals 25, which is the thickness, minus the dimension that they give you, which is the 5, and that will automatically solve it for 20 millimeters deep. So now we have our cut. The next thing we have to do is fillet and chamfer the part. So let's do the fillets first. We want all the edges in here, so let's go ahead and select all of those connected to the end loop. You can see five edges. But that's not the only 10 millimeter fillet on our sheet, so let's try to grab as many as we can in this one fillet feature. We have also this edge here and all of its friends. We want connected to three edges, so that's just the outer four. And that should give us everything we need. So that's a 10 mil fillet here, 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 and this corner, and then all the corners of this inside pocket. And finally, let's add some chamfers. We need to have a 2 millimeter chamfer at 45 degrees. Everything else we'll just leave as is, and we will select this edge here, this edge, and then the two in back. And those chamfers are created. So now all that's left is to place the hole. We'll use the hole wizard, and this is simple. All of your parameters are given for you. The counter bore hole, ANSI metric. We have the hex bolt, the uh, ANSI B18.2.3.5 M. We have an M8 hole, the fit we want to be close. And then we want to show custom sizing. If yours shows up without custom sizing selected, you can just put a check in the box, and that will give you the custom sizing for the inner diameter of the hole, the inner diameter of the counter bore, and then the depth of the counter bore. And you can punch those in right here. End condition is through all, and all of the other options we leave blank. So now we position that bad boy. We'll position it, let's actually get normal to this so we can get a little better view. So I'm just gonna place it down there, and we need to dimension it now. So I'll grab the smart dimension tool. It needs to be 30 mil from the center to the bottom, and then from the center to the side. Those dimensions do not change, so we're all good. Accept it, accept the hole, and there you have our part. So now, the moment of truth. I highly suggest double checking every single variable in this part once more before you move on. But finding the mass is as simple as going under your evaluate tab and selecting mass properties, and now you can take a look and see what our mass is. 14216.51. So luckily, we have a multiple choice answer here, and you can see that 14216.51 is not one of our answers. So something's off. We have to go investigate what that is. So after looking at our part, I realized that I had the wrong value for our boss extrude. So the fillet that I put on this part is actually supposed to be a radius of 15. So let's go ahead and accept that, and that's going to change things slightly. Let's rebuild, control Q, and check our mass properties and see if that changes anything. It certainly does. 14207.34 grams. That is exactly letter D in our test, so we can feel confident that that's correct. And if we aren't confident that that's correct, we can check the answers and see that yes, indeed, it is letter D.